This jacket is tight, but it's cute. It's like a raincoat that I got from the thrift store. But it's been like seven years. I think. Yeah, I think it's been seven years since I got this. So. I can't. I can't move my arms. It's like. Cutting the circulation. Another day of going out, but we did some damage today and had a little too much fun. So I will show you guys what we got. Dun, dun, dun. I'm running. I'm running out of cleansers, and I was just going to look into. Uh, beauty store in Chinatown um, to use because my face is breaking out and stuff. I should do like a little um, beauty haul thingy of stuff that I use but yeah anyways but it was the store wasn't open yet so we went across the street and apparently they have an S Mart which is also similar to the beauty and snack place that we went to in Cherry Hill in the new Asian supermarket and they had a lot of cool stuff but we only went to the snack section and here are the snacks we got this cake thing which is very popular in Japan not not this brand but just this type of cake snack thing. I keep hearing a lot about it. My mom actually got this and I didn't realize we got it until until now. Until on our way home. We'll do this a little later. This coffee candy. I don't really drink coffee but my mom loves coffee so she got this. <gasps> These cookies, they look like the Goya cookies. Yeah. Oops. This is dried squid. Something in my yard. Yeah. This is dried squid. Um. It's a fun snack. It's especially for drinking snacks, but as kids, we always had like a lot of like just a bunch of dried fish and stuff. So, yeah. If you like seafood, you'll, I think you'll like this. And this, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but if you're Asian, then you probably remember this kind of candy honestly oh it's a plum candy but it's a dried plum so it's really i don't want to say pungent but it is a strong flavor i used to eat it sometimes when i was a kid but she's very like you know tedious not tedious but she's very grown and that's why she's wrapped in these little papers and she looks like this because it's, just, it's not specifically for the adults, but it's definitely um, a mature taste. And then we got some Yakult for our baby niece because it's yummy. Sometimes she likes to drink it and sometimes she doesn't. She's very on and off about it. Then I got this. It's not the specific one that I want, but it's still basically the same thing. And I keep hearing all these cool things about this. So I'm going to try it. I only got one, so 
we'll see if it like you know does major changes and stuff but it's supposed to have like collagen help with your skin and be like low in calories all at the same time so it's very like filling and nurt not nurturing but nutritional for the body and the skin all at the same time and we got some Logan fruit. This is my mom's doing because she loves exotic fruits. I mean, well, this is not exotic to us. This is just the norm. And last but not least, fish ice cream. It's not actually fish. It's just shaped like a fish. And it has um, vanilla and chocolate syrup. I like this version. The original version is vanilla and red beans. Yeah. I can't really get around to red beans. I'll tolerate it, but I, if I had a choice, I would not pick it. And I like the chocolate one. This is not new. We've had this before, but I don't think I've ever showed anyone this. This is also for our niece to try. She's not going to have the whole thing, but I don't think she's seen this. Yet. Or maybe she did. I don't know. Um, she probably forgot, if anything. Nah. That's all for snacks. And now, our tiny little beauty haul. My mom got this face mask from, I forget what it's called. Oh, Beauty of Josephson. Very popular brand. Same thing. Then she got this but she got the regular pearl and the black pearl and that's mom mom getting those masks they're pretty reasonably priced usually when you buy single sheet masks they're like a dollar or two the name brand ones are um like three dollars or more each for each sheet a one-time use sheet and then i got this honestly they didn't really have a huge selection in the store but i knew going into that store it would definitely have been um, a more cheaper or better price than another store that i almost went to but in google maps this store had more variety and it did have more variety but not that much um i've used their this brand's and their whole line um serum and i liked it um yeah so i know this i recognize this i haven't used the cleanser before and because i'm breaking out and i need to like exfoliate because my face is is weird like that it's gonna do all of those things and this was 18 dollars which is not that expensive but a little bit more on the expensive side so yeah i gotta use this very 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 carefully and try to make it last for like a whole year or something but yeah that's my haul thanks for watching oh my god this looks <laughs> this looks a little weird I know a bunch of people can do this, but seeing it from a different camera angle looks very strange. <laughs> okay, anyways, I just made another discovery. So today is uh, just a rest day and um, I was just chilling and then I was like, I should do something like you know continuing to work on my account um to publish this book that i'm making and just kind of figure out my way around the website um and then i well one i realized that I should have, I have to have my pages already ready. 
so it's not a website where I can just like okay this is the title this is the author here's all my information and stuff and then there's no section where I go in and like start writing as if it's like google docs or word like I have to go on my own separate whether it be google docs or word or whatever and start typing up pages there and then upload that onto um my account and then that's when i can like see it structurally how the book would look like so there's that which is fine because then that means i just have to get to the good stuff so yeah and as i was putting in information i was looking up um I was looking up because I'm doing self-publishing so I have to put in like bank information and stuff and I, it really makes me nervous when I start going into that area because I'm like hopefully you know no one takes my stuff knock on wood um but yeah and I submitted all that stuff cleared and then I was like before I go further let me just go on another tab and type in like things I wish I knew before like you know starting this account or well something about you know self-publishing and like starting all of this just to like you know do a thorough double check just to make sure I'm doing everything right and just be aware that what I know what I'm getting into and it seems everything that I've already read so far so nothing is sticking out that's making me like second guessing which is good and i came across um someone's i want to say blog but um page their own website where they talked about their journey and stuff and they were saying like here are 11 things that i wish i knew or here are the top 10 things and stuff like that and this one person um they were like like the type of person to go into this especially if you like want to pursue and start off with self-publishing they were saying like even though if you um never not never read a book but something along those lines they were saying like even if you haven't read a book or you you don't really pick up books that often and but you still write it as a way to express yourself like like there's the book and then there's the writing like you're either the person who's reading or you're either the person who's like writing and this person was saying like they were always like that from the start like they were always writing like their thoughts their feelings like things that they've been going through sit by the window just contemplating on life and stuff and I was like, wow, that was me. That was me from the beginning. And yeah, it just, you know, like, he, like, like, like having a flashback of myself, of just these little hints here and there of the, uh, per the person that I um, was and am and still continue to be was like you know hints but hearing another person who is like you know already well into their career say that this is how they were when they were young is very confirming and just another like actualization where it's like there are people like that um yeah and then I was still looking through articles and there's many different like places and websites that you can go to to start your self-publishing journey. And I think in that same article or another article, but I think it was in the same article, they were saying like, if you love like fiction, you're always creating stories in your head and stuff like that. And you're always like, you know, writing down all these fictional stories and stuff this 
specific website would be like you know your best friend like because this website they have they tend to have higher sales for these type of genre of books so I was like hmm but I'm trying not to let that persuade me into like going off of my own path and trying to you know get something that is just out of you know greed and fear so yeah so then I was thinking like okay my book isn't technically fiction no and I still am not sure yet like I'm definitely like ready to like start grinding out and typing things down but I'm not quite sure yet on because because right now it still feels all over the place in my head like maybe I'll have some poems here maybe I'll have some short stories or essays here um so I just felt kind of like not discombobulated but kind of like um I don't know I kind of just felt like all over the place so um I forgot what made me go to it but I was just I for hmm wow I really huh I really don't know how I got to this point the reason why I'm turning this on right now the main point of me talking about all of this to right now is that I made another epiphany not epiphany but like another realization that there is a book that is like the concept of what I'm thinking that I want to go down that that format of and it is chicken noodle soup of the soul or chicken soup for the soul yeah chicken soup for the soul and it's crazy because um I, I will say I'm about to have another epiphany we had a lot of books in our house when we were really young growing up there was this like weird shaped coffee table that had like a little that was also <laughs> a cabinet or a drawer in the inside it had a door in the inside and it was hollow and it was stuffed and filled with like a bunch of old books and they were all my sister's books and I just love like go like just opening it because I love the smell of old books but also just like seeing it's just like kind of opening like a a treasure box although I was not into reading it it was still like you know books and all these stories and just like you know chunks and bricks of just like you know genres and all this stuff everywhere so it was in my <laughs> eyesight all the time um I never really paid attention to it unless you know I was just absolutely bored but it is something that I kind of looked over but is kind of like you know definitely stained there and there was as obviously growing up and going to school you in in my school or when I was in school we had to like have a book to read or write for homework constantly um so yeah I think the first book that I that I chose to take to school with me and read and I think I I used that book as like a pastime I think there was a part in the day where it was kind of like okay break time or like if you're done doing this and you don't have anything else to do then like you know you can go read a book or ask the teacher for like to go on the computer but I don't even think we were at that point yet so yeah because I don't remember I don't remember writing down any homework for the chicken soup for the soul book I remember doing it in like a year or two younger where we did have to read a book at home and like you know write a summary or, or write something a book report for homework every time but this one I think I read out of 
because I I genuinely just wanted to read it. And it was Chicken Soup for the Teenage Soul. And there's different editions, I think. Is that what it's called? There's different parts. There's part one, part two, part three. Um, or number one, number two, number three. And I think the one that I had was number three. And it was a book that was already in our house that one of my sisters probably read. So it was just already there. And I was like, okay, I'll take this. I'll read this. And it's a bunch of short stories. But they're real stories, apparently. I was searching up just now, like, just to double make sure, like, it's short stories slash essays and, you know, all that stuff. And poems, question mark? Because I feel like I remember seeing a couple poems thrown in there, here and there. But I'm not too sure. But I, I am shook. I am like, wow, wow, like really, really? Huh? I mean, I'm sure there's other books too. When I was like a kid, and you know, probably reading like you know, kids stories and stuff with like pictures and all that. But this was like the first Chicken Soup for the Soul, for the teenage soul, was like the first thick book that I was reading and had no pictures or didn't have a lot of pictures it probably had like a couple doodles here and there but no pictures and yeah and I think I also like you know folded down some pages because I liked the stories too like I had a bookmark and everything so yeah I think it's just crazy how it's kind of like ooh, full circle Okay, you guys don't understand. I was just outside petting the cats. And now that the weather's getting nice. Now that the weather's getting nice. There's a lot of bugs out there. And I get really freaked out when they fly a little too close and I can hear it. So I have to like cover my head. So that way I'm not like, it's in my hair. Or it's gonna go in my ear. I have trauma. Okay, you don't understand the whole story. I'm gonna show you guys the fish ice cream. Da, 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 da. Gubba, 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 gubba. It's so cute. Okay, that's all. I'm gonna enjoy my ice cream now. Bye. It's so perfect. Like, look at the top what japan they just they do it every time it looks dense and it it has a bite but it's very light and the flavor is honestly not that sweet mm. highly recommend if you see this up the Asian supermarket around you. Try it. I bet you didn't know I could do this. She's an old lady. My cardigan has a hole in the neck area. I don't know if you guys can see. So we're gonna try to stitch it back up. Dun, 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 dun. Isn't this the cutest? It's a tomato and a strawberry. And this is like a bunch of like placement needles because obviously I can't have my finger here holding it down while it's like threading super duper close. So this needle is gonna go what a random video this is. <laughs> it's gonna go in between and hold it down. Okay, I tried to get it as straight as possible. Surprisingly, <laughs> the inside, let me show you guys the inside. Okay, surprisingly, 
the inside looks a lot more straighter and more put together than the beeping outside. It looks more... <laughs> but that's because the thread is coming out on this side. Like, if I pull the string, more of the thread is going to come off. So... I'm probably, after I sew it, I'm probably going to have to just trim these. Ugh. I'm just going to pray. Okay, we're going to put this lever down. and It has this metal plate, and it's holding the clothes down. I don't know why I'm explaining so much when you guys probably don't even have... <laughs> I don't know if anyone has a machine or is wanting to use one and now i'm going to use my oh, my pedal to guide i feel like i might be getting a little close to you know what it's going around the needle i think The needle will go faster if I push more on the pedal, so accelerate, you know, like try to Okay, I need to show you guys. Look at this. I, this is, wow, I'm really, I'm a young person, but this is what I get a little bit excited over. It doesn't look great. I am going to trim these extra frizzy stuff. But look how, like, it's, like, I don't know if you can see the stitching. It's black stitching, but the stitching's, like, right there. But it's really close together. I put it in, where am I? I put it in, oh my god, this setting. So it's really, like, closely woven together. And you can see it better on this side because I couldn't find a smaller um, black thread. So I have a dark blue one, but in the light you can see. Like, look how close that is. It's not straight, but it's pretty straight. And I'm just happy that it's close down because now when I take these pins out, it's... <clears throat> It's hard doing it with one hand. When I take these pins out, go back in the tomato. When I take these pins out, I probably sewed this pin in to be honest because it was going over under it. Beep. It's like, I about to say, do you see? It is sturdy, it is not opening. It looks better on this side than it does on this side, but it's thrifted, so you know that is a it's a minor thing. It's not a hole, at least. But yeah, <laughs> I'm an old lady or whatever. But you know what? I like being an old lady.